Hello everyone, Daryl here. And as part of our repair video series, it's been suggested that I do a series of videos on electronics and electricity. And I thought that was a great idea because so many people out there really don't understand how electricity and electronics work. And being able to diagnose simple circuits and electrical issues is really a big help when it comes to repairing almost anything these days, from cars to appliances and just everyday things around the house. We're going to start with a basic, simple lesson today. We're going to be talking about how to use a voltmeter, also referred to as a multi-tester, because it does a variety of things other than just voltage. So this one here is a mid-range model. I believe it was around $40 at Sears. It's a Craftsman. And you can see on the scale here, it's got several different... Let's see, my focus isn't working right. Let's try this. There we go. It's got several different scales and ranges on here of things you can use it for. This particular one's an auto-ranging model, which means you set it to either volts or ohms, and it automatically picks the correct range of voltages or resistance that you're going to be measuring. Some other ones have a manual scale, which shows the ranges in voltage like 0 to 12 volts, uh, 200 volts and up, or 50 to 100 volts. But this one's auto-ranging. It measures it by yourself and gives you a good scale of what's going on. Okay. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be showing you how this auto-ranging digital multimeter works. And we'll do another video later with a variable scale analog meter too. So you can, in case that's what you have, you can see how those work. They're not much difference, but we're going to keep it simple. Our first test today is going to be one of the basic all-around tests that this thing really comes in handy for, and that's battery testing. My wife had a brand new digital watch she bought, a Pulsar, and, and we're going to see if we can figure out why the Pulsar doesn't work. And I'm pretty sure it was a clearance model she got, so that means it was probably left over in the store for quite a while. I'm thinking the battery's just dead. So, on the battery, what we're going to do is we're going to take our two probes. The red is the positive, and the black is the negative. And we're going to touch the red to the outer side of the button battery, and the black to the small inserted center part. Now, in this particular battery is a one and a half volt battery, so we should be getting a reading of anywhere from 1.4 to 1.6 volts if it's good. Anything less than 1.4, 1.3. It's not worth putting back in because it means it's on its way downhill fast. Alright, the original battery I just tested right there came out to less than half a volt, 0.4 volt. So Now we're going to check the new battery that I've gotten out of the package. I have a whole case of batteries that I keep on hand for repairing things. And I recommend not buying the bulk cheap brand batteries, no brand batteries. I buy all Sony batteries now. If I buy the Sony brand batteries or some other name brand batteries, they seem to last quite a bit longer. So we're going to check this brand new battery here. All right, we're checking the new battery now. I say the, the black negative on these button batteries goes in the middle, and then you touch the red to the side, and there we go, 1.56 volts, which means this is a good battery. All right, so we're going to install the good battery into the watch and we're going to be pretty sure that's going to work and that is our basic function on how to test a battery and it works the same way with like AA batteries, 9 volt batteries, C and D cell batteries um, all those you can check the same way and you just need to know what the voltage of the battery is. Common A, AA, AAA, uh, C and D those are all one and a half volt batteries and the little square ones, like you have a smoke detector, are 9-volt batteries. And if you check the battery voltage with your multimeter, and it's more than a volt off what it's supposed to be, or even, well, on some of the smaller batteries, like the 1.5-volt batteries, if it's more than a quarter of a volt off, or a third of a volt off of where it's supposed to be, then it's a bad battery. So if it's a 1.5-volt battery, and it's under 1.3, 1.4, it's probably bad or going bad real quick. If it's a 9 volt battery and it's under 7.5 volts, you know it's time to change it. So, um, 
This is our first lesson on how to use a multimeter tester and checking batteries. Um, next lesson will be in either ohms of resistance or possibly volt testing for auto applications. I haven't decided yet, but stop back in soon, subscribe to this channel, and you'll get a lesson on electronics and electricity and testing with a voltmeter. And I think you'll find it very useful to repair and diagnose things around your house and car. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.